I might as well record this for everybody else. All right, so this would be, generally speaking, if you have Um, if you have a are given a mass, you can usually assume it's a solid if it's not written. And if you're given a concentration, you can assume it's going to be aqueous. So if we hmm, are trying to figure out what's used up first, we want to figure out our limiting reactant, just like before, once we're sure that it's balanced and it does look balanced to me, our chlorides are good, our magnesiums are good, our oxygens are good, and our hydrogens are good. Um, to get to moles of magnesium hydroxide, that's going to be another, another case of a window. Um, that's going to be another case of using molecular weight. So 9.56 grams of magnesium hydroxide. And let's see, magnesium's got a molecular weight of 24.305 plus two times oxygen plus two times hydrogen. I get 58.319 grams is one mole. So when we do that math, divide by 58.319 at 0 0.16. One six four moles, and the fact that we're given a solution and a concentration doesn't change the fact that all we really want to do is get everything in moles. Once we get everything in moles, we can do our stoichiometry and figure out our limiting reactant. It just changes how we get to moles a little bit. So in this case, remember that molarity is moles per liter. So if we have a solution, that's the, the conversion we're going to use 90, 95 times out of 100 in chemistry. If we have a solution, we're going to have a molarity. If we have a molarity, we just need to know how many liters of the solution we can convert liters to moles. So if we have 200 milliliters, That's to three sig figs. We know that a thousand milliliters is one liter because it always is. And um, that's on our conversion sheet, right? Then the question just needs we just have to use our concentration as our next conversion. If we had a whole liter, it would be 0 0.050 moles. Hmm. So we wind up 200 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.05. We're only keeping one sig fig now. So all we need to do is fill in our moles here. And it, this is a one case where we wind up with such drastically different amounts of moles that it becomes pretty obvious we're using up the, the um, HCl twice as fast, and we have 10 times more of the magnesium hydroxide. Um, 
still a good habit to be in to show your work, to show what the um, limiting reactant is. Um, and then a lot of times I would, I would recommend um, looking at what the, the next question is. <clears throat> and this slide doesn't have, doesn't show the next one until I dance it for a second. So the fact that this says that our next Our next question is how many grams of MgCl2 will be produced from this reaction? If we want to know how many grams of a product is being made, then showing our work to figure out what the limiting reactant is, we might as well um, we might as well do that the method where we just predict how much product we can make and then whichever number is lower is the real number. So we said, 0 0.164 moles MgOH2 and one mole MgOH2 makes one mole of magnesium chloride. It's another case, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right, from our balanced reaction. So mathematically, nothing's changing. So if we used up all of our magnesium, we could make 0 0.164 moles of product. And then we're going to compare that to if we used up all of our HCl, how much product could we make? Hey, Sean. Yeah. Is there any way that you could just like verbalize one more time? I just have trouble seeing how to set up with the words like will be produced, like trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. And it it's it's one of those things that that I've been doing this for a long time so it seems it seems kind of intuitive to me but I get that it's that it's really tricky um because everybody asks that question. Um and a big chunk of it is the fact that it's before or after the reaction arrow. If it's after the reaction arrow, if it's a product, that means you're making it. If it's okay. the reactant, okay. if it's on the left-hand side, that means it's being used up. Okay. So if I wanted to finish showing my work for the, we'll switch colors. Uh, zero point. So that's really way too small. 0 0.010 moles of HCl. And for every two moles HCl, we could make one mole of product. So if we use up all of our HCl, we can make 0 0.0050 moles. So looking at those two numbers, the smallest number is the one that we got from HCl, which makes sense because we have 10 times more magnesium hydroxide in terms of moles. And we're using up the HCl faster because it's a two to one ratio. <clears throat> so really by showing our work here, that just sort of um, justified what, what uh, we could, we probably could estimate in our head. Like, well, if I've got that much more of the magnesium hydroxide, I'm probably running out of HCl first, unless we had some crazy stoichiometry, like a 10 to one reaction happening. 
<clears throat> when they're different, their number of moles is that different, um, you can usually guess what the limiting reactant is going to be. Although, like I said, still a good idea to show it until you get the hang of this. So if we wanted to know how that tells us how much MgCl2 we could make too, we can make 0 0.0050 moles. Question asked about um, how many grams though. So we wanna know how many grams of MgCl2. We just have to take the moles of MgCl2 and, and do a quick molecular weight conversion. So I'm going to clear out my little workspace here and we'll show that molecular weight conversion. It should be a pretty small amount we would expect, right? Because very small number of moles. Use the molecular weight, we know one mole of MgCl2 is going to go in bottom. Magnesium is 24.305, and chloride is 35.453. There's two of them. We get 95.211. So I get about half a gram, 0 0.48. That would be our theoretical yield in grams. <clears throat> and if I don't specify, if I just say, what's the theoretical yield, um, then you can leave it in moles. But if I specify specific units, you just might have to do some conversions at the back end to, to finish up the question. But the big step is that getting to moles of whatever compound I'm asking about. And then you can do your molecular weight or whatever <clears throat> else you need to. All right, I'm going to clear most of this, zoom out. Um, don't Actually, no, I take that back. We do want to. Um, the next part is just more practice with concentration. It says, what is the concentration of the excess reactant when the reaction is done? So actually it says, what is the concentration of HCl? So I adapted this reaction and forgot to, uh, to change this one to say of the excess reactant. Um, and when I change the concentration of HCl. If we wanna know the concentration of the excess reactant, when this is all done, well, magnesium hydroxide is soluble in water. So whatever, however many moles of magnesium hydroxide we have left at the end of this, we can use that to figure out our concentration because concentration is moles per liter, right? Our concentration of MgOH2 after the reaction is gonna be moles MgOH2 left divided by the volume of the solution. Right, because that's that's how we did our molarities, right? Is always just find how many moles you have, find out what your volume is. 
Um, in this case, we have to make some assumptions here. We're starting by, if we think physically about what we're doing here, think you know, magnesium hydroxide looks a lot like salt. We're basically taking salt, adding 10 grams of salt to um, 200 milliliters, so about a pint of, sorry, no, about a half a pint, about a cup of water. If we want to know the volume of the solution after the fact, generally speaking, our volume is not going to change. Volume of the solution is going to be the same before and after. Because when you add a handful of salt to a pot of water, you don't, the volume of the water doesn't change once it's dissolved, right? It turns out actually by dissolving ionic compounds in water, it actually makes the water more dense. It pulls everything closer together. So despite the fact that you're adding more stuff to it, you don't change the volume. And yeah, we're making a little bit of water, but it's such a small amount that again, that's not gonna change the, the volume of the overall solution. So we can assume that our final volume of the solution is still gonna be 200 milliliters. So then we're going to plug that in for volume of solution. Of course, we want it in liters. So 200 milliliters is 0 0.2 liters. So moles of magnesium hydroxide left. Now it's just an excess reactant question. Figure out how many moles of magnesium hydroxide we used subtract it from moles that we started with. Right, so if we used up all of our HCl, so 0 0.010 moles HCl for every two moles H. CL, one mole of magnesium hydroxide used. So to find our concentration of excess reactant, just take moles we started with, subtract the moles that we used. So we get 0 0.159 moles magnesium hydroxide left. So to get our final concentration of the excess reactant, we're just going to plug that number in on the top here. We get something a little under one, I believe, 0.159 minus or over two.
and remember that capital M is our shorthand for moles per liter. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so concentration gives me another way to ask these questions, but the same basic ideas of theoretical yield and excess reactant are still going to be um, at the heart of these questions, then it's just a matter of setting up the right units, either before to get to moles or taking moles and getting to the right units at the end. Questions on this one? And it's it's one of those things that when you have me directing you and reminding you what concentration units mean, uh, it's easy enough. But again, at this point, remind yourself you really only have two ways to get to uh, to moles, right? The only two ways you have to get to moles is from atomic mass or concentration. Um, not next week, but the week after, we'll add one other way of getting to the number of moles um, for our gases. But for the most part, that's all it is. If we keep track of, okay, all I need to do is get to moles, and here's my two tools for doing that, then it becomes a lot easier to read the problems and figure out what I'm telling you in the problem statements. All right, that's all I have for for you guys for right now. Um, I believe the homework is more practice with stoichiometry again. Um, and the quiz, let me stop the screen share real quick. Um, the quiz is again going to be more uh, more practice with this. Let me double check problems. Um, since I did change up the order of material a little bit. So balancing, mold to mold, stoichiometry. Yeah, you guys have, have everything you need to do the, the homework in the quiz and to get you feeling comfortable about it and feeling good about stoichiometry and balancing. And then in true chemistry fashion, once you're comfortable with it, We'll add more wrinkles to it that make it tricky again.